hello everyone welcome to this video and it's all about the all new ultralytics yellow v8 module this module is absolutely awesome it's not just uh accurate it's not just like precise it's really really optimized and it's just just like awesome and with a new uh, python environment integration that has been uh, added to the yellow uh, modules is really really awesome it allows those who want to have the python in, uh, environment integration being done easily um, it saves a lot of stress because with the previous modules uh, integrating it in the python environment will require a lot of things to be done uh, though it was possible but you need to do a whole lot of process but with this new module it has that easy integration like we have down here to have it straight in the python environment working it run have some few run tests have been done so in this video we're just going to look at how to set it up the python environment and then get your code running with opencv just the opencv way so you have control over how uh, your outputs are coming you choose how to um, put your results and you don't want to go by the traditional uh, creating the runs folder putting the detect files down there so sometimes you want to have like what is happening per detection in a video or uh, that you have saved or from your camera feed so that's what we're looking at in this video so this is your official github page and um like always they have a collab that uh, leads to that page and how to run it so a quick run you just hit you choose the runtime you test and then you can have this running straight without anything being done so you can just go straight ahead like run 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 the codes get the outputs it's just the same things that you're seeing here that is going to have if you keep running um each cells but like i said our concentration for this video is on the python environment how to get it set up fully so without much time being wasted let's hop on to that and we thank Archalytics and the whole team for making this possible is a really, really new update on that. Okay, so first um, we can have our terminal. So it can be any OS you want, Windows, Mac, Linux. I'm working with Mac right now. So, and I'm going to, I have like the mini forge condor to so use the condor for my virtual environment and other stuff, but you can just go uh, straight away with your base module if you have python already installed and then you can do your pip uh, install the ultralytics line so from the website here we can see when we come back here it shows the in installation which is very simple pip install ultralytics and then they have uh, straight away some um, cli commands and then the editor the python environment commands that you can also have and then run so we are concerned about the python environment setting it up so if you're on uh your whatever os just need to figure out how to get your virtual environment if that's what you're going to use or if you're going to use the base environment to create whatever but i have a virtual environment that i'm just activating with the condor then you just do your pip install ultralytics in that virtual environment so if i hit run i already installed that so um, everything here is done and it, it installs all the dependencies that is going to need from uh, cv2 numpy the pytorch the required version and all of those stuff is going to be installed in the environment okay so with that being done we have our full set up uh other analytics environment for our code to run so i am using vs code for this uh test you can use any id of your choice um pycharm or spider or in anaconda vs code or you can even use your um, the normal python editor you just write the code just as we have it uh here and it should work perfectly the same for you 
Okay, so in here, um, I I'll leave the link to the Git uh, hub for this particular project in the comments sections and also in the video description as well. So anyone can access the code in here. So we're not gonna like go dirty, like type in it, just like an overview explanation on how to uh, have it done. So the first thing will be the system check. So once you have the Ultralytics installed and everything, we want to just do uh, import Ultralytics, then Ultralytics dot check system. So if we run this, it should give you an update and information about your computer system. So I have uh, 10 CPU, 16.1 gig RAM, 0.0 gig RAM, and then it gives you the disk memory and all that. So currently I'm going to run this with on a CPU, but um, later video will look at how we're going to uh, utilize the M1 chip for this code base. Okay, so once you have this running, then you know everything is fully set up. Let us know if you have any issues in the comment section or anything like that. Then we see how to help ourselves with that as well. Okay, so a basic code. This was just straight from their website. But uh, I added some few stuff just for you to like see what is happening so we understand how we're going to integrate this with our OpenCV uh, code. So here we import YOLO from our Ultralytics module that we've imported. I'm just importing NumPy. Though we didn't do pip install NumPy, but with the Ultralytics that we install, it included all the dependencies that um, the module is going to need to run. So, hey, we're good to go. So here, if we highlight on the YOLO, we can see is expecting uh, a weight in a string and then a string version v8 it can do without this v8 uh, but uh, i see that um it's going to be like maybe future integrations where you can select the kind of the version that you actually want to use to run like your module which is going to be awesome with this uh, i see we are using v8 now so i am uh expecting that maybe future upgrade like yellow v9 or v10 you just come in here the same module just select v10 v9 then you choose which one you actually want to use yeah so down here we have this and that um we create a new module then from the yellow class then we want to do our detection on the module so we can just do it without but i just wanted to see what is happening on the output here so i just assign it to a variable then we can play along with that variable we'll be using this more in our uh, opencv file so if we have here we just pass our source in here which is the image we want to run the test on and then the confidence you can put the confidence this way in here then here is if you want to save it or not. So save equals true or false. So yes, I want to save then. We are leaving it to be false now. So we just see what happens. Okay, so the v, uh, the image we're trying to reference is under inference and then the images, then image zero. So, and the image zero is here. So this is the picture we want to run the test on. So running this video, um, this code here, and then the output, we are printing it, and then we are printing the detection dot output of zero dot pi. So the output here is going to be a tensor. So we want to see how the tensor comes out, and then we want to now convert the tensor to a NumPy array so we can use it uh, with the OpenCV, just control it around. Okay, so running this, we see all the number of detections that it was seeing. So with this, it creates this uh, array. So this is the tensor that it came out and we can't work with the tensor that well. So um, there are different ways to deal with it. So what I found more convenient for me was just to convert it back to an umpire array. Then I see it and I know how to work with it. So here in that single frame, we are having that, um, for the first object that was being detected, 
we can see this is the bounding box parameters. The first four is the bounding box parameters. Then this one is a confidence value. And then the last one is the class ID. So the class ID from the Coco data set. So class 41, zero, I know for sure is a person. So it's detecting a person. And then this is the bounding box to draw around that person. But we are not seeing the output. That is because we set the save to be false. So let's set the save now to be true and see what happened. So with this one is going to now bring in that runs for that nat uh, naturally is being included here so we have the runs folder the detect and then this is the output that we have it so it draws the bounding box around it naturally just so perfect so very easy to set it up in your python environment with a detection part now let's say we want to pass a video to it if you pass a video in here it's going to do the same running process. So it's going to go um, loop through it multiple times, multiple times. And then if the save is set to true, it's going to um, uh, save the final output after everything, every run is terminated. And constantly are going to have an update of whatever that is being shown down here as your output. So. Let's set our value to true. So now we want to have it integrated with OpenCV. So we have like our output run um, in our live detection. So what we do is pip, um, we import our NumPy, we import CV2, import uh, the YOLO from the other analytics, and then we import random because we're going to use random a lot to move about with creating some um, colors to draw our bounding box because we want to do it ourselves but that is the natural way that OpenCV uh, comes with so we just see on each frame what is happening on each frame that is what we're doing okay so in here what uh, I am in, uh, including here is I created a test file of the Coco data set so if we go under the under the utils here, we have the cocoa test .tst. So all the classes in there, we just put it in a test file like this. Yeah. So what we are doing uh, down here down here is we are trying to open the file and then we read the mode and. After reading the file, we just want to create a list of all the items and then we close the file. So a whole list of that item, then we can use that in appending the name to the output. Then after, based on the list that we have, so the class list that we have from here, we want to generate random um, BGR colors, which is going to be used by the OpenCV to draw the boxes around the detections that we are going to have so we create a, a an empty list then we randomize um, for r for each time or for each element uh, in the list so that is the total length then we want to create a random value between 0 and 255 assign it to r and then same for green blue and then put them append them to the list of colors and then here we import our weight that we are going to use. So the weight is lying down here, we choose V8. And note, if you put it in there and then the weight is not found, it's, uh, if you don't add any directory path to it, it's going to automatically download it from the web inside your um, directory for you. And here is where we add a resize, um, variables for resizing the frames and you know um, the small frames helps with optimized run so if you reduce the size of the frame before you pass it through the module it helps you to have a very fast uh, process 
So here, then we do the normal uh, CV2 video capture. So we can see I have two of them down here. This is this first one is using the camera, and then this second one is using a video from our directory. So we have two videos that we included down here. So this is a video footage from a scene in Africa. Yeah. So that is because I wanted to have like a very disturbed background and see how the new yellow performs with that. Okay. So doing that after importing the video, then we check if um, the video is um, properly open. If not, we exit. Then in our while loop, we read the file to a frame. We check if it doesn't exist, then no frame will break out of our loop. Then if it does, here is one thing. Um, the module wants to take a single image at a time. And I didn't want to do a lot of process. There were a lot of ways to work with this, but on each frame that is coming, we are just outputting that frame. We are writing it to our image folder. So that's why we have this uh, image folder in here, the frame. So this is going to always be replaced with um, the new uh, frame that is going to come at each time. So we write it, then we import it with the same name because it's going to move through this because the frame is available. We save it and right after saving it, we want to pick it up and then pass it to our module, save it and then get our parameters. But we don't want to save it because we don't, we don't want that folder to come in our runs folder to come in this time. So let me just take this side off. Yeah, so we don't want our runs folder to come. We want to con take control of whatever the output is coming. Then we want to decide what should happen to our output uh, on each time. Then um, the next is like we were doing at the other side, we want to convert the tensor array to a NumPy array. Then after we do that, we do that, we want to check if the length of the detection parameters is not zero. So this detection parameters, if it's not zero, meaning there is a detection, then we want to loop through the detection parameters and then we have the parameters for each. Part. So if we look at this array here, down here, we can see that um, this is a list of the first object that is being detected. So we want to look through it so we get all the parameters of each. Then after getting all the parameters, we want to draw a rectangle on the frame. Then we want to draw it at position the first. So the bounding box position, this to that, and then the second point will take that. You pass it as an end, even though it's displaying as um, integer in here, it comes as a float when you call it. So you just need to change it up to an end else you get some errors. And then the color, we also want to select the color based on the position. Cause remember we created a list of colors as well. So integer, the param number five, is going to be the position. So the number five is going to be the class ID. So it picks that color there. Then constantly, anytime that particular class is being identified, it's going to pass that to it. Then we put a test of the class name to it as well. So that is why we created that um, test list. And if we look in here, this is a class list. So the class list, also takes from the position, the five, that is a class uh, index. Then we add a string of, we run the confidence value to four, uh, the confidence value to three rather, sorry, cause that is at the position number four. So we run it to three, we add a percentage sign, then we want to put it as position, um, zero and then for the x side and then the position one 
minus uh, 10. So based on whatever the the first point and then the second point is, so we move it up a little above the top line. Then the the name color we kept it constant, but you can also change it to whatever the bounding box line is or anyhow you want to have it shown. Yeah, so basically that is it. Then we do CV2 the show. So on each frame is going to constantly show what is happening. Then if you hit the kill, he is going to terminate our run. So running this just to see how it's working. So you choose what to have pin on each frame. You can go hard on different processes with different open CV processes alongside with um, this very yellow V8 module. And this is so wonderful. I'm really, really excited about this new future. And I hope this video helps you a lot to know more about how to integrate it with the environment. This code is going to be available on the GitHub page so you can have access to the code, copy it, duplicate, use it, and then you can also help build it up with more awesome projects. So the next video is going to um, cover how to work with the training part. So how to train your module inside the Python environment um just like we're doing for the detection inside the python environment then we're going to also look at custom data set as well so it's performing pretty much well yeah so there is a, a second video in there so if we check the list of videos that we included in here we have africa zero and africa one so you just try it on the Africa Zero, and you can also try it on your webcam as well. So you just change, uh, move everything, and then put zero. So down here, this is the second video, and it's really detection is really really high, having higher accuracy, and it's consistent for some time. Even the noise and other stuff. So we're going to leave the video in there try with it and you can also make some uh, pull requests with some project wonderful projects that you work on it okay so thank you and we're hoping to see you in the next video where we test on the train part